Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let us uh, start this lecture with a quotation from Ben Sweetland, who says the world is full of abundance and opportunity, but far too many people come to the fountain of life with a sieve instead of a steam swivel, right. And they expect a little as a result they get little. Although Buddha has told expectation is the cause of the misery, but however expectation is very essential for any progress. So, uh, let us now get into a discussion on our uh, thermodynamics and in the last lecture we discussed about basically the phase change process. In that we will also talked about not only the liquid and vapor phase but we also discuss about solid and liquid phase, solid and vapor phase and solid liquid vapor existing together right. That we call the triple point, at the triple point you know all the properties thermodynamic properties will remain same or it cannot be changed. So, that is why it is being used as a reference point for the temperature scale. So, uh, let us look at some data about the trip, uh, what we call triple point data for certain pure substances in this table as I have you can see if you look at uh, I am like uh, it varies a lot like where the carbon you know it is having a very high temperature. 3900 and the pressure is 10100 kilo Pascals. And interestingly if you look at the carbon dioxide it is having triple point of 216.55 Kelvin at 517 kilo Pascal, 517 kilo Pascal means what something 5 atmospheric pressure roughly. Okay. And mercury of course, it is a, a very uh, what you call high temperature, but the pressure is very very low 1.6 into 10 power to minus 7. Of course, we always deal with water or the steam that is 273.16 at 0.6113 kilo Pascal, very low pressure you know is not it. Is it very low pressure or not? Because 100 kilo Pascal is your atmosphere. So, this is a very low pressure. And as I told that this temperature is being used as a reference that what will be the plot for the phase diagram. That means, what are the variable we can think of using the pressure and temperature as a you know in this plot and what we call it as a phase diagram. And if you look at in this region it is the solid and this region is the vapor right. Now, if you are at here and if you go on you know giving some heat at this pressure then you will be directly getting into vapor without passing through the liquid phase and that process is known as the sublimations. But however, if increase the what you call pressure further in case of water we have seen it is very low pressure 0 0.6113 kilo Pascals. So, you will find a point that is basically a what you call triple point where solid liquid and vapor exist together. So, that is the triple point. And if you consider another point right here, let us say you are at here and uh, then you go on 
adding the heat to that you know um, solid let us say water if you consider. And uh, there are two kinds of things what we can think of one is substance that contract on freezing right okay. and a substance that expand on freezing right. So, we have already discussed that is the water which expand on freezing that is the reason why the what ice is floating on the water am I right. So, am I right or wrong. So, therefore, the substance you know one is like that and the rest of the most of the substances that contract on the freezing. So, if you are at the solid then it will be converted into the liquid and then it will be converted into vapor. That means, at this pressure it can go through all the process. Now, if you look at this phase diagram is a very compact one, but it would not give you a lot of other things. What are those it is not depicting or describing? Can anybody tell me? So, if you look at this line let us say sublimation line right it is going directly to the solid and vapor, but there is a kind of situation where both the solid and the vapor will be existing right yes or no. So, that you cannot really describe in this similarly for the what you call liquid to the vapor right there will be a weight mixtures we cannot describe like in this diagram. And this diagram you know is very important particularly for metallurgy and other things and so also for uh, like your steam or any other pure substances what we will be dealing with. Keep in mind this uh, what you call triple point the how it exists one side is solid here and other side is vapor and this side is your liquid right that we call it as a triple point is not it. And below this triple point there will be sublimation only the solid and vapor will be existing, but is it true for all the time or is it true for the all the substances or will it be different. Can I not have some solid and maybe two solid and one liquid I can call it as a triple point. Is it possible or I can have two liquid point and one gas point or the vapor point can I call it as a triple point. I can call if it is joining <laughs> together you know like, but is it possible for any substance or we will go by this you know triple point means three phases will be you know around existing independently you know like and kind of things. What do you feel? I am not getting any answer. So, let us look at that and what is happening, but before that let us look at another point what it is critical point you know critical point if we just go where the liquid and vapor will be coexisting as I told in the last lecture that at this point the specific volume of the gas will be same as that of the specific volume of the liquid. But as you go on little bit above it you know let us say you are here it is a liquid and then it will be converted into vapor and then if you look at across that it changes right. So, let us now look at like uh, something uh, a substance like which will be contracting on freezing that is the what you call water. So, if I uh, till now we have looked at what you call 
till now we have looked at two dimensional kind of diagrams, but uh, now I have put it all the three dimensional that is pressure, volume and temperature. Right. So, if you look at this point, these are the points what you call solid and vapor region and this region is the solid right and this is the line which you call it as a triple line. This is the solid liquid and this side is solid and this side is your vapor and uh, liquid and this side is your vapor. And of course, this is the critical point where both the vapor and the liquid you know uh, will be existing. And if you look at like uh, this is the substance as I told earlier that it will contract on freezing unlike the water. The water will be expanding on freezing that is why density became lower and the water will be floating on the sorry ice will be floating on the water. right? So, if you uh, consider I mean from this figure if I take this pressure and temperature you will get a line here and that is basically liquid and vapor and this is your solid and vapor and this is your solid and vapor line. And uh, of course, if you do that P and V I mean if you look at from this side it will be uh, you know plotted like this and this is liquid and vapor as I told this will be triple line this is the liquid region there will be solid and liquid region and there will be solid region. And this will be what you call valid for most of the substances except water right. Now, we will consider another situation that where uh, you know liquid will expands on freezing that is water and it will be having what you call the similar features like it will be having solid in this regions right and there is a liquid vapor region and this is a solid vapor region and of course, this is the vapor region and this is your critical point. If I just plot it here the pressure and temperature like it will be having similar like you know liquid and vapor region line and this is solid and vapor region line. But here this has been changed as compared to the previous one that is a solid vapor line it has been slope has been changed earlier it was you know like this earlier and it has been changed. So, if you look at this line if I plot this you know from this side that is from this side if I plot I mean if I look at from this side you know pressure and the volume I will get this is basically volume. So, I will get the liquid vapor region here and this is the vapor region. However, and this region you know it is a different you cannot have it will go directly you know kind of things from the liquid vapor and you will get solid here of course, in this region it will be solid and liquid and that is the liquid region. Therefore, because it is expand on the uh, point that is the region y at uh, what you call below this uh, point you know it will be go directly to the solid. And as I told that you know like let us look at this phase diagram of water which is quite interesting and because the ice will be at total maybe something around 7 in a solid ice will have 7 phases right. Similarly, if you look at your carbon you know carbon will be 2 phases right like your diamond and then uh, what you call carbon right and graphite sorry there is a three phases the carbon graphite and diamond three phases. Similarly, you can think of liquid helium you know like it will be having two phases. So, here the solid ice 
is 1 here and then if you look at this is also a triple point right I can think of about a triple point here. And in this case if I consider this as a triple point one side is solid another side is solid another side is liquid. But if I consider a here this point as a triple point requirement three point are joining right you know three phases are existing together right. So, one side is solid other is solid other is solid. So, it is really possible and similarly one can uh, think of also any other points here this will be two solid and then liquid. So, I thought that I will uh, you know show you this diagram which will be quite interesting that uh, ice is having seven solid phases you know. So, this phase transformation what will be uh, knowing uh, from the one phase to solid to the another we can call, call it basically solid you know allotropic transformation kind of things. So, let us look at the phase diagram of a carbon dioxide right. It is uh, similar in nature, but if you look at this is having a little difference here like like it is you know moving this way generally the diagram will be like that, but it is going this way. But the important point is here that if you look at this triple point right where all these three phases existing it is if you look at this pressure right this pressure is above the atmospheric pressure am I right, but whereas the water it was below right because the atmospheric pressure is uh, something around here 100 kilo Pascals kind of things. Now, if uh, if you just uh, at the atmospheric pressure if you are in what you call solid right and if you uh, you know you it can be converted directly into the what you call the it is uh, ice because it will be in the ice form right. So, if I consider this as atmospheric pressure the gas you know it can be converted directly into the solid form and uh, at a temperature if you look at it, it is something less than uh, 200 Kelvin right. If you look at this temperature at which the phase change will be occurring is basically less than 200. That means, if I extract the heat from the carbon dioxide at atmospheric pressure right and if it reaches something less than 200 Kelvin then it can convert it directly into ice. We call it as a solid carbon dioxide or dry ice right. So, that is why I mean like that is being used using this carbon dioxide and can one can think of. So, and all these uh, properties what we have seen in basically uh, what you call the temperature pressure you know kind of things and then specific volume. But however, a thermodynamic properties we need to uh, talk in terms of entropy and enthalpy because for our analysis we need and that properties can be shown on the H s diagram the H is the enthalpy and S is the entropy and this diagram was made by Dr. Richard Moyler. Therefore, this diagram is known as the Moyler diagram right and uh, oh, ok. So, uh, this diagram will be looking like that H is plotted here with the S entropy if you look at this is your saturation line this line corresponding to saturation line here and this is your uh, vapor line vapor gas or the vapor here. And in this case this is the weight mixture of different uh, you know quality like 0 0.7, 0 0.75, 0 0.8 it goes on and this became a saturated line x is equal to 1. And 
if you look at this is all corresponding to different pressure like you can say think of like 10 kPa here and 20 kPa goes on increasing till 10 mega Pascals. Earlier days we used to uh, you know this diagram to evaluate the properties. For example, if I take the pressure a particular pressure line you know let us say 200 kPa right and uh, if I know let us say some weight fraction for example, if I take a 12 uh, 200 kPa if I my weight fraction is here right and this is the isobaric process right I will go from quality of 0.95 to let us say I will go to the point 0.8, I am moving here to let us say point 0.85, 8 right. So, what is happening? I can get directly enthalpy in this point. So, this enthalpy, this enthalpy change will give me basically how much heat is being added you know or it is being what you call there will be change in enthalpy that enthalpy I can get directly from this chart. And what are the problems I will face with this? For example, if you find out that um, your x the quality is not 0.95 it may be 0.96 right then you will have to interpolate and do that and then there will be lot of error involved in that. So, that will be, uh, but you can get quickly the data from this plot and evaluate it and uh, you can also feel what is happening at a constant pressure and other things you can think of. It is not only the constant pressure one can think of, one can find out what will be the isentropic process from here. For example, I can move from this point and say that vertically I can go down and say that what will be my uh, these things and what will be the pressure I can get all the data from here right. The, uh, what will be quality if I go down and if I know that uh, you know like how much I uh, will be then I can get what will be the pressure, what will be enthalpy all those properties I can get from this diagram that is the Moyle diagram. Earlier days these diagrams were being used very much, but nowadays it is being less used because it is little bit inaccurate to uh, this thing. And this, but however, this diagram will be helpful to visualize what is happening instead of doing some mundane calculation. Uh, so, keep in mind that critical point is not shown in this case. But however, if you look at a bigger uh, kind of things one can uh, think of using that. So, what are the disadvantages with the graphical data? Because what we are looking at not only the processes from this we can find out graphical uh, the data and which will be useful for our calculation. The value as I told the, the value from this uh, you know diagrams or the or the Moyer chart or any other kind of diagrams will be uh, not very accurate, but as it is difficult to read properly you know. So, therefore, uh, that is one disadvantages. The interpolation of data as I uh, told you that suppose you want to evaluate the quality at 0.96, however, in the diagram it is given as 0 0.95. So, therefore, if you want to then it will be inaccurate you will have to approximate in a paper. So, that will be leads to the loss of accuracy of the data and limited number of data can be represent can be presented in a diagram. You cannot put all the things because it will be very clumsy and cluttered. So, therefore, uh, that is the limitation and for most substances the relationship among thermodynamic properties are too complex to be expressed by the simple equation. You can say that why not to express in equation that is really little difficult to do that, but however, as we are progressing maybe we can find out a data or a relationship which can take care of that. So, that is an open challenge to uh, have a you know at least semi empirical relationship which can be utilized, but till now 
people are not successful in giving expression which will be accurate enough to be used for the calculation. So, uh, some thermodynamic properties can be measured easily as I told like, like pressure, volume, temperature this can be measured easily, but however, there are several which cannot be measured. For example, like your uh, entropy, Gibbs free energy, Helmers free energy and enthalpy, internal energy. So, those can be really calculated by uh, using the properties which can be measurable or measured properties can be utilized, but we need to have a relation between these things and which we will be discussing little later on by that one can do that. And uh, uh, the partial derivative property is not readily available, so whose estimation is quite difficult to lead to the loss of accuracy, because these graphical data one can think of you know like using uh, you know for particular pressure, uh, particular uh, certain measurable properties right. So, then if it is not available then you will be uh, you know uh, will be trouble and also the uh, there will be loss of accuracy. Therefore, that is the reason why the properties are frequently presented in the form of tables right, because of these disadvantages we need to uh, uh, keep the data on a tabular form and which we will be discussing uh, particularly the stream table and the refrigeration table and I will be discussing more the steam table in your tutorial classes refrigeration table will be discussed. <coughs> so, uh, let us look at this proper, uh, property data in a tabular form and as I told that properties are uh, frequently being you know kept or presented in the form of ta tables, so that it can be easily utilized and um, as uh, I told earlier that uh, these properties measurable properties can be utilized for finding the what you call non measurable properties of course, using the thermodynamic relations and the result of these measurements and calculated values of this all the properties can be presented in a tabular form in a convenient you know format, because format is also very important and how you are presenting the data and how it can be extract, extract, extracted. Let me tell you that I have already talked about enthalpy, but the implication of enthalpy is that it is the combination of property which we use in our flow systems. As I discussed earlier that we are using the control mass system and you know control volume system or the closed mass you know like a kind of things we call it as an open system where the flow will be taking place in that case you know we use uh, basically the internal energy let us say at station 1 if I say this is station 1 and this is station 2. So, it will be having certain you know flow work that is P 1 V 1 and otherwise the flow will not move and it makes it the flow to move. You can think of as if a piston is there and it is you know pushing the fluid to get into this and also it is going out. We will be discussing that little later on. So, also it is uh, with uh, you know leaving the fluid is leaving this control volume with the uh, internal energy V u 2 and the flow work of P 2 V 2. So, that together you know uh, combination of this u plus p v uh, being uh, utilized in the open system and we call that as a enthalpy right. And that if you look at this uh, p v is basically the unit is joule and uh, if you look at this is basically you can think of pressure is k p a and uh, unit of the volume is meter q that became kilo joule and if it is uh, the specific volume you use, if we use the specific volume right 
and uh, that is meter cube per kg, which is multiplied with the pressure K P A, you will get the kilo joule per kg. And uh, you can think of using in you know FPS unit, we call it BTU, British thermal unit and that is PSI pounds per square uh, inch into the feet cube that is multiplied. So, we will be using not only uh, as I told that the uh, enthalpy, but rather the specific enthalpy which is basically per unit mass. So, the steam table uh, which we will be using very frequently for uh, getting the data uh, for uh, solving the problems kind of things. So, it can be represented in tabular form in the following manner, but however, before we could look at it, we need to understand how many you know variables we can put and how what will be the format of the steam table. For that, we will have to use the Gibbs phase rule that is F is equal to C plus 2 minus P and F is the degree of freedom and C is the number of components what you need to represent and P is the phase. So, if you look at for steam the uh, component wise it will be water right, component wise will be water. So, therefore, C will be 1, but there might be several other things like let us say if you look at your petroleum right products, it will be having several compositions right. So, therefore, their composition will be need not to be one, it will be several of them right at different uh, kind of things it will be there. So, uh, and we uh, let us consider that we are interested in what you call two phases liquid and vapor that means, the phase will be 2 right and then what will be the degree of freedom? Degree of freedom will be 1. What is the meaning of that? That means, for the complete specification of a state of a system right when we are talking about two phases and the, you know um, what you call the single component substance, then one independent thermodynamic properties either pressure or temperature is sufficient to describe the system right. So, therefore, that is the reason why uh, we will be using and knowing this thing we can find out the properties like internal energy like your uh, enthalpy and your entropy and so on like Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz free energy right. Um, but, however, these properties cannot be really measured directly I have told several times and which can be related to the energy change of energy of system and this derived data can provide the values to the change in internal energy, change in enthalpy, change in entropy, but not the absolute values right. Absolute values you cannot really assign to these quantities. And hence, we need to have a reference state and generally this uh, reference state should be chosen such that uh, you know this numerical values must not uh, chosen and uh, such that this certain numerical values must be assigned. That means, you need to assign certain you know values to the reference the way we have done for your uh, what you call temperature kind of thing. So, uh, reference point for uh, you know is taken considered as a triple point of water for uh, these substances I mean if you look at the steam and uh, for the and that is corresponding to temperature of 0 0.01 degree Celsius and pressure of 0 0.6113 kilo Pascals. At these conditions you know like uh, entropy and uh, the internal energy enthalpy in a kind of things can be considered as a 0. And then we will go to change that positions and then get the values. So, choice of this reference point does not affect the actual data right 
you can uh, have a different, but this is internationally accepted triple point as a reference point. As a change in thermodynamic properties, you know, is uh, basically required. So, therefore, we have a reference point and then from that you will evaluate, because what we will be getting is a delta u. So, therefore, you should have a known reference point and then you will calculate what it would be. So, let us look at the typical thermodynamic properties of the saturated uh, steam uh, and we call it as a basically pressure, because the pressure is a variable. If you look at I have given 1 kilo Pascal here and 10 and then 100, 200, 2000. Of course, this is a very large 22,000, 120 kilo Pascals kind of things. <coughs> So, uh, of course, uh, if you look at this is not given this inter interval, larger interval, you know it is not given in a very uniform way, but if you look at actual table like it is given as a closer interval, right. So, that you can get the data. <coughs> and uh, what you can note here, uh, let us say 1 kilo Pascal if I take, you know temperature is very, very low like 6.98 degrees Celsius. If I take this, you know, uh, this temperature is basically corresponding to the saturated temperature. If I take something 10 K P A, this is 45.8 degrees Celsius and this V F is what is happening here? It is goes on what? Goes on increasing, am I right? Very slightly, because uh, it is a compressible liquid, you know. So, therefore, that is not much change. But however, if you look at the V z, that is specific volume of the uh, vapor, you know it is goes on decreasing at a very rapid rate as compared to the liquid, because this is compressible in nature. And if you look at the enthalpy, this is the enthalpy of the liquid at that uh, pressure of 1 and enthalpy of gas this 2514.54 kilo joule per kg. And this enthalpy is goes on what you call increasing and this is uh, basically if you look at that is uh, it is also goes on increasing kind of things. <coughs> um, and if you look at the change in enthalpy is you know uh, latent heat of vaporization is goes on decreasing here right. If you look at here it will be very high and here it will be very low and uh, keep in mind that this corresponding to the pressure of 20 uh, 2120 kilo Pascal that is mega Pascal 22.1 is corresponding to the what you call critical point, where this specific volume of the vapor, uh, sorry uh, specific volume of the liquid is same as that of the specific volume of the vapor, the same that is the critical point. So, let us look at uh, the another table what we will be using, we call it as a temperature table for saturated steam. Here in this case, what is given is the temperature and corresponding saturated pressure, you know, and the first one what I have given here is 0 0.01 degree Celsius and pressure is 0 0.6113 and uh, these are the specific volume of the liquid and specific volume of the gas and enthalpy of the liquid and enthalpy of the gas. So, this basically the your triple point temperature you know case. And uh, of course, as you goes on increasing the temperature, your saturated pressure goes on increasing and it reaches a pressure where you are having a uh, what you call the uh, this pressure is corresponding to if you look at this temperature 33 uh, 74.15 degree Celsius is corresponding to what? This one is your critical point, because the specific volume of liquid is same as that of the specific volume of the 
gas and this is corresponding to where the enthalpy of the uh, what you call the liquid and the vapor is also the same. That means, latent heat of vaporization at the critical point is 0. So, uh, now what happened suppose you know we are having a table here. Of course, it would not be as I told it will be not that uh, you know inter, uh, interval that big interval large interval. So, it will be nearby, but let us say we are having 10 degree Celsius and there is another temperature 20 degree Celsius, but you want to evaluate at the let us say 15 degree Celsius actually temperature what will be the properties. So, how we will go by that what we will be doing this is not really linear, but we take a linear interpolation if it could have in the relationship. So, if you look at this table this data is you know like uh, all these are not linearly fitting otherwise you can have expression and then do that um, very beautifully you need not to have a worried about the steam table or the refrigerant table and put the data in a tabular form if it is linear. Uh, keep in mind that the relationship between this data cannot be express as a linear form, but however, we will be using a linear interpolation between the two data points just for the approximation sake and this is an approximate because we do not have any better way. As the interval will be small that is good enough to take a, a linear interpolation. For example, like if I take this uh, there is a temperature here corresponding let us 150 degree Celsius and I can have a properties from the table I can get 0 0.3924 um, what you call uh, meter cube per kg right. And I if this is known. So, the, if you look at this is known right this point is known and you will be knowing either temperature. So, that you can find out the specific volume and you if you know this temperature you can find out the uh, specific volume at this point but you need to find out you know what will be the uh, specific volume here. That means, for that I need to find out I should know the temperature then I can find out specific volume right. For that what we will do? We will have to use this slope because this is a linear this slope is same as that. So, I can say T minus 100 is uh, divided by the 1 right because that is at 1 and uh, this as 0.393 is equal to 150 like if I know this is 150 and corresponding to this specific volume right 150 minus 100 and because this is this portion is known right values then uh, I can evaluate find out what will be temperature right. In this case of course, I know that at this specific volume what will be temperature. There might be a situation you know the temperature and then you can find out what will be specific volume <coughs> right vice versa you can do. So, uh, of course, uh, if you look at like if you want to handle the saturated uh, mixtures kind of things then you can uh, find out the quality and from knowing these qualities you can find out the specific volume right. And if I know this uh, what you call from the table if I know this internal energy or the enthalpy at the saturated liquid point and if I know this H f g or if I know this uh, H g right if I know this H g, H g is basically uh, saturated vapor enthalpy and then from that I can find out H f g, H f g is nothing but your uh, H g minus H f. So, if I know this, if I know this one then I can find out that by knowing this quality I can find out enthalpy for any quality. Similarly, I can find out entropy and other properties like en internal energy and other things. So, let us take an example like and to illustrate how to use the steam table like uh, in a piston cylinder assembly 1 kg of saturated liquid water is vaporized completely 
at 100 kilopascal. And we need to determine the volume change and amount of heat energy added to the water. So, that is the, the you know this thing what we need to do. So, if you look at the mass is 1 kg and pressure is 100 kPa and we need to find out change in volume and enthalpy. So, how to go about this? Let us say change in volume, how we will do? Basically change in volume will be change in specific volume into mass that will give me the what you call the change in volume. So, what in this problem what we know? We know basically at 100 kPa this point is known, this is basically saturated, saturated what? This is saturated liquid point. From the table of if I look at 100 kPa, right, I will be knowing what will be V f and similarly I can find out what will be because saturated vapor, right. I am saying that this in this problem what liquid water is vaporized complete that means this point. So, if I know this V g from the table, I can very easily find out the change in uh, what you call the volume. So, if you look at from saturated steam table at 100 kPa, we can get these values. V f is very, very small. Keep in mind that this is 0 0.001, you know, you can say 0 0.043 meter cube per kg, it is a very, very small. And V g is, of course, very high that is 1.6949 meter cube per kg. We can find out also H f which is 417.46 kilo joule per kg and H g is very high that is 2258.01 kilo joule per kg. And if I know these values right, I know these values. I know these values at uh, 100 kPa. So, uh, from the steam table, then we can find out very easily that is delta V is nothing but m into V f z is equal to m into V z minus V f, right. And you just multiplied uh, the difference because it happens to be 1 kg. I have taken an example which is a simpler one. So, that the change in volume is 1.69 or 1 point you know 7 meter cube you can think of right. So, uh, similar way we can find out the enthalpy change during this phase change process this is basically phase change. So, it will be same as that H uh, or delta H is equal to m into H f g is equal to m uh, H g minus H f and H g and H f is known. See this is known because this is nothing but your these values and H f is known, this value is 417, you substitute these values, you will get this amount of kilo joule. So, we will uh, stop over here and we will be taking some few examples in the next lecture, how to use the tables and what are the problems associated with it. And uh, later on, we will be moving into the also how to uh, talk about the gases other relations. Thank you very much.